Okay, uh, so we're starting. Hello, hello. Um, all the wounds are mouths, I guess. Uh, this is a just a little gif I made from a video. Um, I am a painter, but I make video and photo and other things that are rectilinear, either spatial or temporal. Um, I'm just sort of starting these as a this little Jesus torso, just saying hi uh, <laughs> to you, as, as am I. Um, here's me in high school, uh, 1995, junior year, just letting you guys know, uh, come out, everybody already knows. Um, sorry. <laughs> 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 As a 40-year-old, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to like make sure that you knew who was talking to you before uh, this all began. I'm still alive, as will, as will be you guys I I'm Dan, I'm a painter. Um, that's how I identify, I guess. Uh, painting is a lonesome, often solitary activity. Uh, somewhat tragically, in English, it's both a noun and a verb. Um, I'm interested in sort of splitting the act into two parts, right? Thinking about what it is as action and what it is as a sort of thing emphatically without you. Um, I make animations too. Uh, I'm really interested in like how work circulates. Uh, as you might know, not everybody can get into galleries and museums for a variety of reasons. There are lots of uh, geographic and economic um, <clears throat> restrictions to those things and I really care about getting things into the world and getting them to move. Um, painting as a verb for me is all touch, attention, care, resistance, humor, learning to lose. Um, this is a portrait of my friend. We've been walking for a really long time. These are her feet. Uh, paintings about leaving a trace. Uh, this is a head on my pillow and a railroad spike that I put there after the head uh, went off about her day. <laughs> um, yeah, I just sort of like, we didn't do that on purpose. It just gets to happen. It's like a thing to notice. Um, I think that painting and art in general um, it's a kind of rehearsal for other kinds of action in the world, for like looking hard and trying to be there as hard as it is to sort of stay in your own skin and keep your spine um, aligned on its uh, fragile vertical axis. Um, painting two is about resistances. Uh, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for eh, 10 years, I guess. I finished grad school in 2007. Um, I started teaching art history in Chicago in the city colleges, and now I teach painting and, and critique seminars. Um, so I do a lot of playing around with the anatomical models, trying to like hop around and get the skeleton that's in you out of you. Um, painting is also about working with available materials. Um, this is a photograph that I took in high school with a little fun saver, a disposable camera. Uh, I love O, the V of course is an A upside down. You've got to make what you can with what you have. Um, and about learning to lose and give up and let it drop. Um, uh, this piece, I guess, is called Antigone. I show it as a painting. It lives in, in painting shows like this big, soft, white flag. Um, so the thing about painting as an action in the world is that like, what do you do with your little rectangles that you make by yourself alone in your studio? How do they mean? The act and the process of painting is super intense. It really requires all of this sort of perceptual uh, clarity and fragility and softness and humor. Um, but then when it gets out to the world, what do you do? And I was wondering, I made this video a couple years ago. This is a still um, where I put one of my abstract paintings uh, that was sort of about language, I thought on a stick and then walked around rural Wisconsin, nobody wearing a bear suit, nobody bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's the thing. Um, yeah, so like I'm interested in like what the weather does, what outside does. If there's a dialectic or if there's an argument, like a, a binary in my work, it's between indoor and outdoor. I think um, this is my Nietzsche book that I left outside all summer long and bugs and mold ate it and it's still material. I'm really, really concerned with uh, ideas and the sort of result of lots of things that we all learn in school about the enlightenment and knowledge and how it sort of transmits and transforms itself via, via text um, as material. I'm interested in material and what happens to things when they're subject to the world. Um, the idea that a gesture that I make on my, in my studio on the left that's part of a palette and the sort of gesture of someone uh, grieving something catastrophic from the New York Times on the right, the idea that the artist has both the uh, guts and the narcissism to posit these things as equivalent. Um, yeah, I think that like that's something that like every artist I know and most human beings I know have to negotiate all the time. Like, is it within you or without you? And that's part of what I mean by by indoor outdoor too, inside of the body, inside of the skull, and then everything else outside, which includes everyone, not you. Um, yeah, so. I started to put like some living things in my paintings for a while to sort of see what would happen. And I was like, oh yeah, this thing is actually alive. It's not sort of living in the metaphorical space of, of being active or vital or dynamic or whatever words we say to sort of aestheticize uh, artworks. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Standing directly in front. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So there's that, like, th th this seems to me like part of what, this seems to me to be a similar dialectic, an actually live thing, a thing that I meant to be live, but instead was a sort of trace of that. Um, little collage, something else the world does, a Studi Garland on top of the sort of broken faces from the Pergamon altar in Berlin. Um, so like little things, I, I don't know, I, I make lots of things, which is probably already apparent. Um, it's really sort of, it was important for me as a younger person, and still to try to acquire new skills. Um, I'm trying to learn how to read sheet music right now, which I can't do at all, and it's a disaster, and I would love some help, like at lunch tomorrow, if anyone can do that. Uh, it's, it's in German, there's a song I like, it's a sad song about spring, anyway. If you want to, you want to be in that, um, right? So there's this stuff. Here's more world. Like that's funny, right? I guess um, if you like that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> that, that that's an important question for artists too, and I think for humans in general. It's like, do you look hard at the world, or do you have to look away to sort of save and protect yourself? And I feel like there's a part of me. I mean, that's that's little joke, right? That like comedy is tragedy plus time. Um, this is an old New York Post headline. This is a recent New York Times clipping. Not enough time to be comic. Absurd, cruel, enormously violent. Um, but I understand both the project of art, the project of the Western Museum, and the project of history being um, situated at the end of a long, violent history of colonialism, right? So like, there's a lot about the world that we look at that we're habituated to as bodies, differently gendered, differently aged, differently raced, classed, uh, located bodies on Earth. Um, there are things that we that we've habituated to that we learn to get used to. Um, a a reasonable response is laughter, but I think laughter comes from a lot of places, um, including one of its motivations could be the relief of of, of nervous energy. Um, Kant, the philosopher Kant, was writing once, and he said laughter is just violence becoming nothing, uh, which I really really like as an idea. Um, this is the dismantling of a gigantic 50 foot statue of Marilyn Monroe in Chicago in the middle of the night. Um, they're all kind of doing the same thing for me. Um, I'm, I'm interested in broken stuff in general as material. Um, an icicle shatters and nothing is quite lost, right? But what else can you do with it? Um, the task of being there at home for me in the last couple of years has involved just painting living things as they die, which sounds super like mawkish or lugubrious. Um, but painting actually is about time. Um, and I needed a kind of live constraint to sort of keep me inside of the rectangle. Um, any of you guys who've never made a painting before probably know that like you never really finish it, you just sort of elect to withdraw from the, from the, um, from the surface. Like when, when is it over? It's like what, what, when you've captured all the information, when it feels right, there's this kind of like unsayable set of criteria that everybody has as a subject when they determine when to withdraw. And I'm like, oh yeah, if the, if the flowers die faster than I can paint, then I'll have to stop. Then I'll have to like understand that I can't hold this, which is kind of what I mean by learning how to lose. Um, yeah, uh, sometimes I couldn't quite handle it, so I was, I'll just spray paint the flowers and spray paint the painting. <laughs> just, so I can, like, just so I can figure out how to get out of here. <clears throat> um, uh, so yeah, what to do with these signs from the world? Um, that's a found protest sign, um, sandwiched between two paintings. I showed it like that on a stack on the floor. Um, it's a little black monochrome and a little sort of like black and white sort of soft abstract text painting. <clears throat> it's called I Think That I'm Bigger Than the Sound. Um, I'm indoor outdoor again. <clears throat> uh, this is a piece that I made on Fire Island a couple years ago. Um, I'm a trained teacher. I have like lots of academic training in, in drawing and stuff, which is the sort of residue of the 19th century Beaux Arts model, where people were sort of taught to address particularly the female body in a particular way. Um, so I thought I would just stand on the, build a little sand mound and stand on the beach um, <laughs> and see if there were any takers. And there were. <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the trick of this was though, the trick of this was um, everybody, who, everybody who, who drew had to model too. So we kind of, we kind of like switched around and there were some strangers in there. Um, the current model is, is my friend. Um, and it's a, it was an LGBTQ uh, residency. There were lots of different kinds of bodies um, occupying the space of, of, of being observed in that way, which is really important to me. Uh, this is my friend Evan, who's the director of the museum in Houston. He loved it. <laughs> he like only wanted to model. Yeah. Um, so like, what what happens like affectively in terms of feeling when you take these actions of indoors that you sort of take for granted as like this is what we do in school? What happens when you take it outside? I guess is part of the question. Um, I'm more interested in questions than answers by far, by far. Um, I, that act, as you can see, because I did it on the beach for like four days in the summer a couple of years ago. Um, I really wanted to make some big paintings and like how to do it without taking up a lot of real estate or using a lot of material or like having to like 
I don't know, move out here to Massachusetts mm -hmm. to like make something that giant. Um, so I did a 30 minute sprint with tape on a field house on a basketball court and made this sort of like big drawing. Uh, it was really sort of nice. And then when the show was over, that's the piece. <laughs> so I, I like the idea that that kind of expenditure of energy um, could make both a picture and this kind of material uh, result. So if people are like, what's the, where's the painting? It's like, well, that's the painting. This was the painting. Um, yeah, other things outdoors. It's a foolish thing to carry your own door. Um, right, so <laughs> it's a screen door, don't worry. <laughs> things just go through you as you know. Um, and then I was so kind of like rattled, I put it up upside down. Um, <laughs> when uh, Bertolt Brecht staged Antigone for the, for the play Antigone, uh, Sophocles Antigone, after World War II for the first time, he had the actress playing Antigone do the entire play with a door strapped to her back. Um, not being able to find the exit, I think, is a really sort of important, both joke and actual thing to me. Um, uh, here's another sort of big painting that I made. This is probably five years old by now, but these are uh, latex and rubber pores. So I just poured acrylic paint and matte medium, polymer emulsion, onto plastic and then pu uh, pulled it up. So these are temporary portable gestures. Um, they're sort of thumb tapped to the wall and then it allowed, gravity was allowed to sort of do its work. Uh, I think this is painting too as a sort of like action in space. We're all in the verb stuff still. We don't, we're not yet in the part where the rectilinear, rectilinear architecture of the little painted object comes with it. Um, so like, yeah, big, heavy, that probably took like three months to dry. It's like three gallons of house paint with polymer in it, so like that's, that's a big, it's made of itself, I guess. Like these are all made of themselves. That's a bike tire on top. Um, right, so that's it. This looked really, really deathy and sad to me in a way that surprised me. I thought it would be funny, but it wasn't. Um, obviously I'm interested in that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the whole show, both sides. Um, yeah, little things kind of peeling off, let's trace and removal and index. Um, index being just like a, a sort of dumb mark of presence. Um, and then there's the stuff, and it went back and it's like, whatever, Trader Joe's bag, and like back home to my house. So it actually like, took that much, uh, all those things fit inside a little bag with the X. Um, when the body doesn't know how to act, it needs something to do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I thought that that was a gift, but it's not. Uh, okay, so a little ghost who like stays by itself, trying to hide its face in its house and just become like either all hand or all eyeball, um, and it's home by itself, sometimes goes to the museum, and uh, messes around. Uh, I'm also really interested in like ideas about permission. Um, I think that this, this might have been uh, tacitly sort of included in, in, in Ben's really, really sweet introduction, but like, I'm not interested in getting a giant grant from Bank of America to, to write a book or put on a ghost costume or do yoga next to a sculpture or something. Like, I, I want to be able to just do it and sort of see what's permitted. Um, it was wild, because I just, security were just like, oh, uh-huh, it's like, like, like it happens every day. Um, the, the little art object next to me is Felix Gonzalez Torres' little pile of candy, which he made um, in honor of his uh, lover who died of AIDS, and the candy always weighs what uh, Ross, uh, the, the lover, weighed in life, and it's replenished every day by the museum. You could eat it, you can touch it yourself, um, and as someone who feels herself to be in the lineage of other sort of like, hopefully sort of funny and also totally grief-struck queer artists. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll just be like sad that he goes the same size as this pile. Um, uh, here's a Zubaran painting from the 16th century. I also really, really love old things. Uh, that's uh, St. Romanus. He died singing. Um, he was martyred. They cut his tongue out and he kept going. So there he is sort of holding his tongue. I'm always really interested when I speak to students and to like my peers too. People are like, oh yeah, I want my work to say this. And it doesn't say unless it says. It doesn't say unless it, it, unless it operates explicitly in language. It does things, right? When I'm, when I'm meeting classes of undergraduates, for sure right now, it's like, I tell them, like, I don't care who you are, I, I, I care what you do. Um, I want what, who you are, who you say you are, who you think you are, to be flexible and dynamic and elastic and soft like your whole life. I want it to be able to change. Um, the thing that matters to me as an artist is what, what is done, what, what we are capable of doing, um, both alone and together. So there he is, holding his little tongue. Mm. Like, these are like all the things a painting can't do, you know? Um, yeah, sometimes the ghost just, sometimes the ghost just waits. <laughs> even those babes, like they didn't even see me, it was amazing. I was like, wow, <laughs> I, I really am invisible. Um, uh, this part of the talk, I guess, is about mark making. Um, this is a torso print, it's my torso that I just inked up. It looks exactly like the look on my face all the time. <laughs> all the time. 
Um, uh, this is a building. This is a gallery in Chicago um, with a little bite, like it lost a tooth, a little bite taken out of it. Um, this is a mark making exercise too. Uh, this is a gallery in Chicago called the Suburban um, that was up, there it is, uh, that was operated by my former teacher, my advisor when I was in graduate school. She asked me to have a painting that show there. This is kind of like a little, like, important, famous, conceptual, serious art space in Chicago. Tiny little cinder block, fragile building that it is. She said, can you have a painting show? And I was like, no, I want to drive a car into it. And she said, okay. So I did. Um, and it's, I, I think that this is a, a painting show. I think this is a mark-making show for sure. Um, so what happened was, uh, this is kind of a hard slide to see and it's definitely hard to explain. It was a 96 with Sabre, it's my high school graduation year, it doesn't matter, but I'm telling you that anyway because it's an embarrassing thing to say out loud. Um, Michelle, who ran the gallery, gave me this painting on the top, that little tondo, that little circular painting, um, as a gift. And without telling her, I sold it to her gallery in New York and with the money I bought the car. <laughs> so in a way, I was just bringing the painting back home. <laughs> Um, just back home hard though, like I do. Um, right, so there it is. I had to do math. The building is made of steel and cinder blocks. I had to figure out how to do it without the thing falling on me. Math is very hard. Um, so yeah, one morning I like, dug up those trees with my friend. We built a ramp. 5.45 in the morning, I just backed up super hard um, from the parking lot across the street and, and hit the building. It didn't fall, but what it did was, and we replanted the trees right away. Um, the thing that happened that really mattered to me um, was that I wanted to show what the thing was actually made of. It had a lot of power conceptually, ideologically, philosophically, um, in, in, in the sort of environment, the context I was operating in, but I wanted to show it as made of this sort of like soft material that like these structures can be both destabilized and shown. Um, so the bricks shifted about that much away from one another and you can sort of see the outline of the grid again. Um, the thing that happened that was the best part of it for me is that uh, the car ended up holding up the building. Um, it kind of fell onto the bumper. Uh, so before I moved the car, after the, a month later when the show was over, we had to brace it up. Um, we ended up tearing the structure down. Uh, the woman who ran it has moved to Milwaukee. We all, it was like, it wasn't quite a conspiracy, but it was interesting because she was my former teacher and we're friends. And it's like, I wanted to do it and she wanted me to do it. And when she talks about it in her own lectures, uh, she describes it as cathartic for her, and I think I can describe it as cathartic for me, too. Um, I wouldn't have done this without permission, though. Um, someone who was writing about it in Chicago called me a narcissistic terrorist. And I was like, wow, <laughs> I'm an abstract painter. It's so interesting. Um, so, like, there it is when the car was gone. It left that little snow hole. I don't know. People kind of went weird about it. There was an, I didn't put the slide in, but there was a note left on the windshield that said, you suck at parking. <laughs> I do suck at parking. <laughs> like, it's, it's hard to stop is part of the point. Um, oh yeah, and I made this little like little shiny used car lot pamphlet to go with it um, on that day, little like poems and the math and the rest of it, but we not, need not go through that now. Um, so yeah, like even if a thing is a big, grand, important idea, this is the unveiling of Rodin's thinker um, in Paris, of it, there it is, holy shit, it's so important, oh my god, this big thinking rock, I love it, so intense, this is us. Um, wow. Uh, in 1970, the Weather Underground, uh, this group of radical political activists bombed it off its perch um, outside the Cleveland Museum of Art uh, with dynamite in the middle of the night. Um, I think what happens when I see things like this is that suddenly there's a lot of sympathy for the object. Suddenly the sort of bronze feels soft, or the ideal feels soft, or it, like, it sort of provokes this response in me where I want to suddenly protect the thinker. This big, tough, hardcore, western, hegemonic thing. He looks like a cannonball or a bomb or something, but suddenly, it's like a thing I want to take care of. Um, and I have to admit, for all of my ambivalence and, and, and everything, I really love art at, in the sort of like anthropological sense of like what humans were and have been and what we have tried to do to keep things, including ideas. Um, skip that. Oh, right, so when the, the piece about the car, when I show it now as sculpture, I just show these little objects, the L from the car, and other sort of things that came off both the building and the vehicle together. Um, also in Chicago, uh, I ran a space, Ben said this too, for 10 years. My, four of my friends and I started it, it's called Julius Caesar. When I left town after seven years, I gave it to the grad students I was currently working with, so now they're running it still, which is rad. Um, this is a show I had there um, called Show. The show is called Show, I mean it as a verb. Um, 
giving a sort of performative lecture there with some paintings behind me. It's a small space, 14 by 14, you crammed a lot of people in there all the time. Um, something I've really liked so far in the like exactly 12 hours or so that I've been <laughs> here is I like watching you guys do things together. It's rad. Um, so the friend part is really important. That's my friend Greg holding me back. I guess I tried to go in after the car. I don't know how to stop what I had already just done. Um, so yeah, the world does stuff to objects. Um, uh, yeah. This is just a collection of photographs from the Metropolitan Museum of things with busted faces. Um, another piece that Ben insisted you guys would want to hear about, maybe. Um, this is like approaching rectangles or trying to figure out how to make a flat painting that goes to the world. Um, I realized that I fit in my suitcase and I was like, yeah, I'm so lonesome. <laughs> how do I get out of this moment? <laughs> um, even though I like my life and I have lovely friends and people who love me, etc. Um, so I decided to make a copy of Rodin's Thinker out of uh, clay and coconut oil um, about my size to my spec and shove it in the suitcase. Um, it was going to go to a show in Milwaukee. There she is. Um, the thing about it is, so I used the coconut oil to make the clay like super, super soft, and it doesn't ever dry. So it's the like sort of poly, poly clay that never dries. Um, the thing about this is, could someone squeak the chicken? <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Again. <coughs> yeah. That's the sound. If the sound were working, that's the sound that this video makes. Um, <laughs> Because its body is full of rubber chickens. Um, <laughs> one, one more squeeze. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> it's almost a laugh. Um, so and it was going to a show in Milwaukee. So it went. So it went through TSA. Um, which this is this is what I mean about the little resistances that the verbs of painting can enact in the world. Um, I knew this was going to happen, which is why I made it with clay that never dried. Um, so I'm like, all right. I was super nervous. I, I got a cab to pick me up in Brooklyn, and the cab guy was like, you got a body in there? I was like, yes! <laughs> yes, girl! Um, so there it is. We made it to Wisconsin. Um, and I decided to just show it how it is. So what they did was they took the head off, they opened the chest and took a chicken out of the chest, and that's how I found it when I opened it back up. I left a little clue of the finger in there so they would know, um, but, but they did the, the little Xerox up there, but they didn't. Um, and I really sort of consider it a, a collaboration with PSA. Um, <laughs> like, for real, you know? And, I, and I, I, feel, I actually feel a little bit bad for probably frightening them. Um, <laughs> but it's just art, people. And like, I, 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 I don't know, I, I think that like art, art actually does, can and can do things in the world. Um, that it creates a sort of interruption that I think is actually really important. Um, so there she is. <laughs> um, right. Just how to keep things and how to let them go. Um, I'm going to show you some paintings now, just because we're like moving right along, I guess. Um, you can't just stare at this forever, or I can't. <laughs> I'm learning not to. Um, I guess I'll give you the titles. Uh, I started painting flowers to like get time in there, as I sort of said before. Um, of course, it didn't sort of stay that way for long. I don't think there's anything innocuous about still life. Um, there's, you know, flower painting is something that ladies have been trained to do for a very long time um, to sort of keep us indoors and keep our hands busy so we don't become witches. Um, but this is, uh, I don't know, this is from, I did this, uh, I guess, a, a year ago. It's called Citizens. Um, I'm still thinking really hard about the world, and I think that the container of of something as, as cliched as a flower can actually hold a lot of things. Uh, cliches are always about the context in which they're used. They always point out the room that you're in. If you tell a bad joke, um, you know it's a bad joke because of everything around it. Um, yeah, so this is called Citizens. Um, it was a terrible summer. There were lots of extra, um, extraordinarily violent and awful police actions. Um, so that's when I made this. That's the detail. There's a painting going around the room, so you can sort of see how like heavy and kind of almost sculptural they are. I use my knife a lot. Um, this is called spring and all. Sometimes the flower and the glass kind of fall apart into, into fragments. Um, when Nietzsche writes about uh, the act of nihilist, he talks about um, that he has already had his heart broken, and once things destroyed, so we can reuse the pieces to build something else. I'm interested in that too as an idea. So spring and all detail. Um, this is called Pina Bausch. 
uh, after the dancer and choreographer Pina Bausch, I realized it looked like her. I was like, oh yeah, that's what I know. Um, uh, this is called Fresh Hell for Dorothy Parker. There's no flowers in this one. They didn't make it. <laughs> they got stuck into the wall. Um, uh, this is called Attendant. So they've let the, tu the tu tulips die so wonderfully and so dramatically, as you probably know. If you left, like, left them on, some on the table at night, and then the next morning they're just like, oh, they've swooned all the way over. <laughs> um, so they're, they're like hilarious to paint. You have to do it super fast um, before their heads fall all the way off. Um, uh, this is actually, this is a good slide of this. Uh, this is called Pool. It has this sort of like heavy uh, sculptural, almost like fat oil paint layer on it, and then I spray painted it with silver from the side. So on one half of it, you can see the reflect your, your own reflection, and on the other half, just sort of this kind of like white, white out. Uh, so it's called Pool. Uh, this is called uh, Eche Mono. Uh, Eche Mono is Behold the Monkey instead of Behold the Man. Um, I make a lot of black monochromes too, and I don't know what to do. Uh, sometimes, like, the flower paintings just become their containers, just become the jars that they're in. Um, this is called Mutter. These are all the size ones going around. Um, the little ones on panel are all 11 by 14. Um, this is called Mutter. Uh, this is called Sister. This one sort of became, like, a, an empty sculptor. I'm always looking at flowers when I'm doing this, but sort of, like, trying to be patient enough and brave enough with myself to let it become what it needs to become. Um, this, I just made this, it doesn't have a title yet. Um, I don't know. I was trying to get the purple and yellow to behave like, like gray. Uh, no title either, I made it in the summer. Um, nothing attaches in between. There's enough like formal and like existential stuff for me to learn here, I think. Um, I've been doing this for, making only flower paintings, I think, for about four years, I guess, and I haven't come anywhere near exhausting it. And I paint like almost every day, or well, all the days I'm not teaching. Um, this is called Lighthouse. It's like lifting their little heads. They fell, but their heads are up. Um, this is called All Glass Year. Uh, I don't know. Last year my mom got sick and it was like really hard and I felt like glass all year. Um, and now I don't because we're all like communicating good and then everybody's like not better, but like good or better at communicating. Um, it's called Dial. Uh, and then here's, here, this is the one that's going around. Um, this is from a series of nine that I made for nine straight days in August called As You Were. Um, As You Were is sort of like what they tell soldiers when they can sort of relax or whatever, but also, I mean, like, as you were before. Uh, there's lots of, like, flexible addresses in the work. There's lots of you that uh, some of the yous can recognize, and sometimes it's a general you, and sometimes the you refers to me. Um, but this is from As You Were, so this is the first one. Um, I sort of mentioned this to the photo class today uh, to Brandon, to one of Brandon's questions, I guess, but like, I sometimes can't see the thing, even though I know what it is, I know it's right there, and I, I just can't sort of get, my, get my eye and my hand to sort of sync up in this way. Um, so like the attention part, the like care part of this is actually quite uh, difficult, even though I've been practicing since I was your age, um, but I think that it's a, it's a good enough practice. So here's the first one, and then they'll sort of like desiccate as we go on, I guess. That's day two, three, four. I was really in love that day. <laughs> Five, starts to go. Six, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Seven, super turbulent, suddenly like a big dumb wind <laughs> got into my kitchen. Eight. Nine. So by the end, it's, it's, it's almost abstraction. These are almost little lost moons or something. Um, this happened one day. I was like, what else is like broken and decaying? Numbers! Sorry, I don't know. I'm just admitting that happened. Um, this is called uh, Universal Furnace. Um, it's called No Lease on Life. It's just a sort of container. Um, it's a black jar. They used to just be called by their dates. Um, so this is like March 25th, 2015. White jar, black jar, white jar. They're all oil on panel. Uh, tuba? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, uh, 
I, I, I have my, my reasons for things, I guess, and I think that like playing with existing structures and sort of toying around with stuff, I'm super interested in when things are used up, I guess. Like when an image or an idea or a task or uh, a romance or uh, an obligation, an education, like when those things are finally used up and I save and photograph uh, my used up tubes of white paint. Of course, they don't stay white. This is how they've all dried and they're like, they feel like the flowers to me. Um, and it's still material and it's still usable and it's still possible to sort of like have a feeling and a response to, I have my reasons for like, you know, I have like plenty of ideas about these flowers and mob rule and Rodan and like the Balkans and like what's going on and like what happens to their heads when they're cut off by the wall and like, what is it, what is it to say thank you and not mean it? And taking these little notes, this is what my sort of sketchbooks look like. And I'm sh I don't, I wouldn't show other people. I'm showing you this because you are students and I'm here in good faith and so are you. And, and, I, and I appreciate your uh, inviting me, but I think that this is sort of like how I work out the ideas, but when it comes to the sort of unsayable, kind of unspeakable, unspeakably stupid, uh, often task of painting, um, none of these words help. Um, and I think I'm doing great on time. Yeah, uh, red. Um, so this, we're coming up on the end already. I'm so psyched. Uh, not because I, I whatever. I, I think that like this, the, the thing, chicken please. Thank you. The thing about doing this is that I'm happy that like some of you are behind me, even though it's kind of weird. Um, because like, it feels sort of rhetorical, and it almost feels like as lonesome as painting itself might be. So that's why I'm happy to stop. So, like, oh, there are other people in the room, and I can like, I don't know, stop feeling so redundant in relation to these objects. Um, so I wrote this book that no one asked me to do. Uh, it's called Nefertiti for the Blind. Um, that's kind of why I wanted you guys to touch this painting in the dark. Um, there's a little story about that. I brought a copy that will stay here, that will live here in the art room after I leave, if anyone wants to look at it. Um, it'll, it'll be here. Uh, to look at, um, there's, I don't know, like, I did it myself and I started a press to do it because I was like, I'll just, I'll just do it. Um, it's better than begging for me. Um, here are the first five images from it. Uh, there are as many words as images, I think. Um, so, face, face, face. Um, right. So go look at it if you want. Um, this is a little, if it works, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's a little, uh, so the book just came out on February 17th. Um, I didn't know how to get it out of my mouth. I worked on it for like two years. Uh, I've never, I've written a lot about people's work. Um, for their shows and for like review, critical reviews and things, but I've never and I re write a ton of syllabi and a ton of like comics and zines and stuff for and with my classes, um, but I've never like written a thing that like said I in this way and it was super nerve wracking and daunting and I didn't know how to put it in the world so I asked a bunch of my friends. Uh, I, I rented a space for the day in, in, in on the Lower East Side uh, by Chinatown and I sort of scripted and cast the book and had my friends read it out loud instead. And it was like super rad. And this is a little trailer that my friend Chris Naka, uh, who took the video, made of it. It has no sound because this has no sound. Oh, also, best news is I got a snow machine for it. So I forgot that part, the most important part. So when people were reading, I was blasting them with fake snow. <laughs> there has to be some interference, always. This is kind of goofy music that Chris put underneath his. got dark and we timed it right so like by the last light we were sort of able to finish the book. Um, it took about an hour. Uh, I, I, I was really, really happy with it. It was really generous um, of all the people who love me to like help me get it out of my own mouth in that way. Um, the other thing I want to say about, while well, I'm still talking, I guess, is that a thing that's daunting about this, it is the saying of I. It's hard about writing and it's hard about talking in this way. Like I'm not, I'm super interested in, in polyvocality in being able to sound different ways and being able to change and being able, 
uh, for the eye that you use, the eye that says, that calls itself by its name, um, that that thing is able to change. That like, my friend Jeffrey from the Bahamas who was reading that like, if my eye is in his mouth, then like, we can understand each other a little bit better. And that's really sort of important to me. Um, so yeah, if you want to go read that, it lives in the art room and <laughs> on Amazon, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, don't buy shit from me, that's what I'm saying. Um, that's the last slide. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your school. Ignore it or do or teach me something. That's it. Thank you, thank you.